Hello and welcome to another Let's Play. Me, Yamu6 of the Smoke Room. Before we start, if you're interested in playing this game, you can get it free on itch.io. But if you want to support the people that make this game and or get the newest version earlier, you can go to Patreon, which is $8 a month for this and other games. <clears throat> so, uh, on the last Let's Play, we were partway through the bachelor party and found out that we're pretty booked. You know, us being a prostitute and the clientele is the bachelor party. Hyena. Man, it's been a hot minute since I played this because I played a lot of videos or made a lot and then, you know, did a bunch of other things. So, yeah, I put this game down in January and now it's July. And some things happen between then and now. Like, I found out that Sam is kind of in the prequel, that being Echo, in a way. You know, the time isn't that far apart as I thought it would be. Like, it's the 19-somethings here, you know? And, you know, kind of spoiler alerts. But you'd find out if you play Echo. And also, they finished one of the roots of Nick. Which makes you wonder... How far are we with regards to all the roots? Don't know. We'll have to find out. Anyways, reset face. Oh yeah, and as a side note, I did go a little bit into this episode, but then I didn't like how I was reading, so I decided to redo it. You know, when I feel a bit better. Let's start. I see her darting in and out of the kitchen. It takes her the third time to see me in the washroom. She makes eye contact and tilts her head. She glances behind her shoulder, puts her empty tray on the counter, and walks towards me, slow. I could have nearly screamed my head off, seeing your big red eyes staring at me from the dark if I wasn't so used to it. Though, I was going to be like, why? But it's like, oh yeah. I mean, she might not know, but all those um, big red-eyed... Oh, 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 in um, Echo. What are you doing down here? Also, why is the kitchen down there? Are we in the basement or something? I don't know. I thought you had guest entertainer. They uh, ain't exactly my guests. Sam. We both heard Murdoch before we saw him, and Cynthia jumped. If one more ho man hops out from the shadows, I'm going to scream for real, and it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> eh, Cynthia. I wish there's more content of her, at least on E6. But anyways, we're in general. Sorry. We both needed an opportunity to slip away from them for a while. Her face shifts from an annoyed look to a cautious one. They violent? I mean, they could be. I technically don't know. Not to my knowledge. More on the uppity side of things. Yeah, I could tell they're out of towners. I can handle men if I know what I'm dealing with. But I don't like to mess with unpredictability. I get the feeling that the less chances I have to make them mad, the happier they'll be when one comes. Chances or guy? <clears throat> They look rich, so I'm in. What do you need me to do? A big, long distraction that will tire folks out. I don't know what that would be, though. Oh, I actually can do now that I think about it. And leave them a bit dazed. Easy. That's such a relief. Murdoch! This time, Cynthia did scream, followed by a surge of words that in a language that I don't understand. Customers aren't allowed in here. Then what is he doing here? He just at the Fox. We're trying to get out of the party without Jim getting furious with us. You're leaving me alone with them? You can come with us. No, you're leaving them, eh, leaving me alone with them. Somebody's gotta guide their hungover shells to that wedding tomorrow. And if it's not going to be you, then it's going to be me. Why does it have to be either of us? Because I heard what Holly wants you to do. 
I heard from the bathroom back at the house. I don't know who Holly is, but you all need to leave here soon. If you want a loud and long distraction, I've never heard a better call for a hoot nanny. Or a hoedown, you know? Am I leaning too forward? We set. Can any of you play guitar? Not well. Well enough. Well, if he starts the song, the rat can finish. The name's Ralph, sweetheart. She crinkles her nose on him. I don't need to know who you are. You're on... No, wait. They're on a timer. They're on a timer? Just borrow one of the instruments backstage. Those belong to Dora. She doesn't lock them up during performance hours. It's fine if you put it back where it belongs. We all walk out and take our positions. Cynthia walks up to one of the women on stage, transitioning between performances. They nod emphatically and guide Cynthia forward to the metal microphone on stage. Now this is something I found really weird. Like, is a metal... When was the microphone created? Microphone invented. I mean, I guess... Uh, 1876. Huh. Okay. I just didn't think it was invented nor here. Because I remember something that was like somebody w was worried when they made the megaphone or something like that or something. Anyways. Y'all having a bang up time? Hoots and hollers shout out onto the stage. Yeah, you can tell. Sorry, I was just thinking that out of here. Ooh, sound effects. Here at the hip, we have a little tradition I know most of y'all are familiar with. It's high time we had ourselves a hoot nanny. The stage voice is ridiculous. Best song wins free drink. Now, let's see. You there, the red fox in the formal getup. Get your tail on up here. Murdoch looks real bashful. Uh, well, uh, thank you for the opportunity, miss. The world's yours, Mr. Uh, Murdoch. You see, folks, this song is about s I'm about to sing is special. Me and my friend Ralph over there were asked by my mother to attend this party for our musical abilities. Ralph pretends not to be seen. So, rusty as I am, I'd like to do some good tonight with something I'm good enough at. This one goes to my future brother-in-law, who's try tying the knot tomorrow. Trying the knot. Hey, I'd like to try the knot. Well, granted I have, but uh, not successfully. There's an uproarious applause. Jim looks incredibly confused. I don't much care for dancing, but if it's, this is the quickest way to leave, I'm long, I've long been ready. Seizure time? Apparently, I guess uh, this is in every route. Wind rocks the desert night, the summer sand. Natural things, naturally. What frontiers men should understand. And nothing's more natural than knowing how to move. Here's a tune about an ache that we can soothe. Let's reenact a snappy scene that duds might find mundane. About a pair of partners who hit up and miss their train. One grabbed the other's wrist and asked to buy a man some hooch. Of course the other said, we'll slay or another working pooch. He tossed and taps a shoulder blade as temperance flies the coop. Then eyes meet eyes and glass meets glass as whiskers start to droop. Well, if you're feeling spry and gay, I think you know what's next. Lock eye to eye and elbows hooked and keep your partner flexed. How could you not go for Cynthia? Wet your whistle, 
quench your thirst, though it be hard to see. Have advice ain't always nice, but hey, at least you're free. Now take a dip and hook his hip. Remind me of that scene where words pass lips between the sips and somewhere rather mean. But hey, they're pressed in closer. Hey, their courage bloomed. And hey, they're taking wagers, boasting over which their manhood loomed. Though side to thigh and pockets frisked, he grabbed his partner's wrist. Got a different kind of drink for you, I simply must insist. Mind grows foggy as those spirits fade. Look now how morning light is seizing our charade. Ruffled slacks, sweaty backs, all about the floor. Revel quietly as others about you snore. Lock gazes and think upon my scene. You may find the things they hadn't yet in thoughts between. Lovers light, morning dark, and everything you know. There's many locks and keys as you allow. Do it. And hopefully we slipped away and everything was well. Oh, I'm just kind of curious. What is the last one I posted of this? Because I know that we're on Murdoch's route. We, that's why, one reason why I'm doing this. Because it's like, well, I guess I would want to see more content of this. But also it's like, when was the last bit? What was the last content we have of this? Oh, it's uh, meeting coworkers and extend family at the school. Which doesn't seem that long ago, but that's like 15 episodes ago, give or take. <laughs> oh, well. <clears throat> you set my face from all that hoedown and hootenannies? Is there a difference? Anyways. Ooh, and sorry if, if you hear my gut. It said Boigas and Pizza. We're laughing and panting as the wind whips around us. Did you see, did you see Ralph's face when I he caught that guitar? He's going to bring you out next time he sees you. And Jim's expression when your friend cut him off. Besides, I've never heard this much from laughing. I didn't think he'd be laughing much at all tonight. Oh? It's a welcome surprise. So, what did you want to do? Where do you want to go? Where? I, uh, why are you asking me? Because I don't get to ask what you'd like to do that enough. By now, I'm usually lifting weights until I'm sore. Is that how you get your arms so big? They could be bigger. I don't really see Sam as a weightlifting type of guy, but eh, I don't know. They're monstrous compared to mine. All your bulk is in your legs. That's because it does cowgirl. At least, lifting boxes is good for something. I guess it wouldn't be that hard to show you how to build up your arms. Who says I want to build up my arms? Because if you did, you could pick up Jim and Ralph at the same time and tuck them behind the top shelf of the store. So are we sneaking back to your room to lift weights then? I rub my chin. Nah, it's a bad idea to get you sore before Holly Holly's wedding. There's no telling what stunts they're going to ask you to pull off tomorrow. Wait. Oh, him. <clears throat> I thought he was talking about me. He's like, wait, uh, doing after wedding sex? So, where to? I lean against the railing of the nearby bank and cross my arms, thinking. There's so much I had to do for Murdoch's folks in the last days have all been a blur. I'd like to relax, sure, but... I can't help but feel like there's something I'm supposed to do. I suppose there's always something I'm supposed to do, ain't there? 
and look up at the fancy sign above me and chuckle a bit bitterly. It would be nice if I had enough money to just make it out and treat Murdoch to a meal. I did before I... Wait a minute. Oh hell, I'm supposed to meet somebody for the other night. Wait, what's wrong? You sound upset all of a sudden. I'm upset because I'm a goddamn idiot. Well, I don't think so. Listen, uh... You mind if we go across the tracks? Not at all. Good. Any reason? There's a mausoleum out there. Okay. Yeah, there was something about the cat girl, but I can't remember exactly. Because, like, she was looking for a friend, and we were briefly her friend, and there's a crazy murder, and then a giant spider monster. It's been a hot minute. Or half a year. And because I need to check up on somebody. At a mausoleum? Yeah. Oh. It's a student in the rose dress and straw hat. Blythe Washington? Yeah, that's the one. She nabbed some of my money and won't give it back to me unless I do her a favor. She stole from you? Nah, she doesn't know it was mine. What? It's a long story. No kidding. Hopefully, it won't take too long at all. We keep walking along the way. It's a lot easier now that he sees through me, and I see through him. We ain't men who like to let ourselves be seen. The distant whistle of a train lets me know we aren't too far from our destination. Kinda makes me want to play um, Red Dead Redemption 2 again, and just faff about, but two things. One, the game crashes. And is slow to load. And a bunch of other things. I, I'm, I'm past all the story. It's been a, quite a while since I finished it, but still. When I get to the graveyard, I take a peek around me. The door to the mausoleum is slightly ajar. But when I go up to open it wider, I don't see nobody. Damn it. You might ha have better luck at her house. Huh? We pass it on the way here. But then again, I didn't see any lights on in the house. They're probably asleep by now. If somebody told me that Little Witch didn't sleep, I'd believe them. His ears perk up. Quiet, I think I hear somebody coming. Maybe I'm not so out of luck after all. Oh, Cliff, careful, my dear. Dear, those causeways are one slippery step away from a twisted ankle. Oh. It's her! Don't worry, I came prepared. They never maintain the pots... What was that word? Potter's fields. What is that? Except face. Too common practice, if you ask me. Okay, sorry. I'm gonna look at what a potter's field is. Potter's field. A potter's field, pauper's grade or grave or common grave is a place for burial of unknown, unclaimed, or in indig and in, indigent people. What's indignant? Indignant. Okay. The only unmarked family name we know is the Begay man. Begay? who was accused of terrible crimes. All of a sudden I have an accent. People say he's one of the unmarked graves here, but there are rumors that James Hendricks the, fir the first moved the body. Okay, I was like, James Hendricks the first? What? What's that sentence? Ghastly stuff. Is there some grain of truth to that? Well, nobody knows for sure. All that's certain is that those who say they're certain, certainly do not know. Cliff wiggles his finger at her. I bet you can't say that five times fast. How much will you wager? Hold on for a moment. He crouches in front of a wooden stake. Well, what do we have here? These ones look like they might have belonged to the Peshlaki family. 
Or at least someone who thinks so. That sounds like a stretch. No, no, not at all. Take a closer look at the cloth on this post. There's seven blue stripes spaced widely here next to three tightly patched red. Then there's another seven blue beneath them, a solid air and a solitary orange. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble reading this. Maybe it's because my reading abilities have, you know, went down the hill since I've done a bunch of visual novels, but still it's kind of like, um, I'm sorry. Though for some reason I do remember having trouble reading this for some reason. According to the locals, those people haven't lived in town since the 1870s. Oh, but this doesn't look old at all. He rises. I never know the specific specificities, whatever, unless I desecrate the graves, but I could never be so ghoulish. I think I've learned about it as much as I can from here. Thank you for your time and your ear, but I must be off to train. Wait, to train? But I must, uh, but I must off to the train. I'm not sure if that's a typo or if that's his saying. I must be off to the train. I mean, I guess that makes sense. You've been nothing short of marvelous company, Mr. Tibbets. Are you leaving us for good? Heavens no, not for good. But I was too ambitious to come here along on my own. I'll supply my own men for the task I need doing when a next return. Is he just going to leave? Man, I'm gonna have to redo like some of these routes because I'm I'm like, okay, what happened in Williams route? What, a year or so ago? And like I don't know. He dips to give her a quick kiss on the wrist, trains straightens his backpack, and trots off towards the direction of the train station. If he's coming back, then I really have to get out of town. Why? I hope he never does honestly. He's nice. Delilah turns towards the mausoleum. Shit, she heard us. Murdoch? Evening, sister. And Mr. Ayers? The very same. She looks back and forth between the two of us. Strange place to be on a night like this. Well, though I should clarify that whatever you shoot... Wherever you choose to be can always be our little secret. I needed some air as well. I suppose the preparations of Holly's special day is taking a toll on all of us. Quite so. Ooh, that was a loud one, if you might have heard my gut going gurgle. Was the bachelor party tolerable? Technically, it hasn't finished. Has she been making demands of you? No more than usual. That sounds like an honest way to dodge that question, Murdoch. What about you? There have been strange ones for me. Strange? How? Well, first, she became cross with me when I gave her a spot of tea from Mother's Collection. And then she gave me a thick letter to keep, telling me not to open it unless Jim got cold feet. Oh, blackmail, maybe? Hmm. Oh no, that's peculiar. Where's the content? Uh, were the contents grim? Or knows how. I fed it to the fire. If she decides again to burn me with knowledge that is entirely not my business, then she can use her own voice, not ink. I see. No matter. I wish you well on your nightly endeavors with whoever or wherever you wish to pursue them. She gives me a curt nod and then turns away. Then she comes up, she comes upon a gravestone and stops walking. She looks like she's deciding to say something or not. Then she turns around, looks at us and does. Important grave over here. You should pay your specs. And then she turns away. Weird little woman. All right. I turn to Murdoch, 
But he looks a bit stiff. Ooh. -oo. He's walking up to the grave, and he looks scared, almost as if he's making sure that there's nothing below the ground pushing up soil. You all right, Murdoch? Yeah. I walked up to read the grave he's looking at. I guess a relative? Oh, maybe his uh, dead brother? It was one of those plain gravestones with only a surname on it. Scroll. Family friend? Can't say for sure. Yeah, I have no idea. Never gotten too caught up emotionally when it came to graves of strangers myself. I think you're here how hoot an owl hooting in the distance, and I take a look around to see if I can find it. Oh, it's some dude in a tree hooting for some reason. You know, bird people. Alright then. That's enough playing with bones, I think. That girl's not here, so you might as well return to the land of the living. Murdoch exhales and nods a few times. Yeah, sounds nice. Oh, we'll just go a little bit further. It doesn't take long to walk back to town. It's the time of the night where the lights are still on in folks' houses, but the streets are empty enough to enjoy a private stroll. Well, uh, well, we went where I wouldn't go. Your turn. Murdoch puts his hands in his pockets. It's a lot of pressure to think up something that tops that kiss he gave me. If you want to go... No, you... Fuck me. If you want, then we can go somewhere else and do it again. He smiles at me. It was just the important one that I wanted. I check my watch. You better think quick then. I'm needed back at the hip sooner than you think. He nods. I think I'm, gonna, I'm going back with you. I stop walking. Then I whistle. You sure about that? It wasn't earlier. He puts his paw flat against my chest and pushes me against the beam, pressing his waist to mine, dipping his muzzle into the air against my ear. It's a weird sentence right there. Now I am. He pulls away with his momentum as quickly as came. I want to go through what you do. I think I'm ready for the men. Now. I loom over him a bit. Lowering my posture to look him in the eyes. Are you sure you want to go through with this? He doesn't break eye contact and nods. I sigh and nod. Well, I'll see about that. I get as close to him as I can without kissing him again. I'll make it as easy for you as I can. And with that, and us hitting the uh, something odd minute mark, I think that's a good time to call it. Especially because I might need a hot minute for my guts to... Um, Settle. I don't know. I had a burger and before I had a pizza. And when I went bowling with friends. Well, maybe not the close friends, but like with people that I know. Well, actually, don't know. Well, I know like one or two of them. It's me trying to be social and all that. So, that's gonna be the end of this Let's Play. So, please comment, guys. I like comments, damn you like, dislike, tips, as always. If you like my YouTube and like see grow, then please like, subscribe, and check out the real side. Become please don't spay near your animal step control the pet population. And if you want to play this game, it's available for free. Ah, no joke. But if you want to support the people that make this game and to get the newest version earlier, then you can go to Patreon, which is $3 a month for this and other games. Do I have <sighs> Red Dead Redemption 2 installed? No, oh, I do. It's just on the external hard drive, I think. Which might take it longer for it to run. Eh, who knows. Kind of would want to... I don't know, I would want to play that game, but not as the main character. But then would that be playing on the internet thing? Don't exactly want to do that. Because, like, if you're playing on the internet, then you're subject to a whole bunch of, like, people just... Stuff. And cheats, maybe. Anyways, did I say spanning your animals? We'll do that. And until next time. Another Let's Play Me. Summit Growling Game 6 of the Smoke Room. Murdoch's Root. So thanks and see ya.